Welcome to week five of cultural anthropology. We are now at the last week of our learning content. This week you're going to be examining three different topics, the last three chapters of our textbook, covering religion, health, and art. These are all very interesting different chapters, with my favorite chapter being religion. This is a topic that I have written a great deal about, both in terms of Catholic iconography, as it has been applied to uh, popular figures in Latin America. Um, I also have <clears throat> um, an interest in ancient Mesoamerican religious activities and rituals, and um, I think that some of this probably is derived from my own interest from childhood in different kinds of religions, including the Greek and the Norse myths that we all grew up learning about. The anthropologist's role in the study of religion is not to determine the veracity or the rationality or which uh, religion is the best or true one. Rather, anthropologists look at the meaning behind religion, the structure, as well as what motivates people to maintain religious and spiritual beliefs. There are many theorists that have tried to understand the origins of religion and the functions that it provides us. Certainly, we can understand that humans have looked towards religious and spiritual beliefs in times of great uh, fear, loss, anxiety. It helps us to cohese um, as a group. You will be looking at health and wellness and illness. And again, it's very simple for us in the United States to assume that understandings of health and wellness have stayed pretty much the same over time, but this certainly is not true. And even our own Western form of medicine is not the only one, nor is it necessarily the best form of medical care. You're going to be watching a film that examines Ayurvedic medicine from India, and this is a medical tradition that goes back thousands of years. In my own lifestyle, I have adopted a number of Ayurvedic practices, uh, largely because it is a holistic practice. Ayurvedic medicine looks not only at symptoms, something that Western medicine focuses on, but looks at the whole being and addresses issues such as stress and diet and family dynamics to understand um, not just symptoms, but the larger balance a person experiences in their life and looks for imbalances and tries to correct those. Chinese medicine is also another holistic type of medical practice that, again, is not merely aimed at relieving symptoms, but at finding the root of ill health. Finally, we'll wrap up with a look at art. And art is something that really distinguishes humans from all other organisms. There is some debate regarding the ability of other animals to create art. And certainly we know that many birds create elaborate nests, which uh, can be part of their mating ritual. But in terms of animals' abilities, to express and convey feelings and ideas and abstract concepts, oh, we simply don't have any evidence of this. But for humans, we know that we have been communicating through different media for at least 75,000 years. And this is really a fundamental distinction between our species and all other prior hominins. We use art on a regular basis. Every morning we use some kind of an aesthetic to get dressed, to put on makeup, to wear jewelry, and this can express everything uh, from our individual identities to our social status. You may choose a religious icon, going back to religion, 
uh, to let people know that you are affiliated with a particular religious group or to express your particular religious beliefs. You may wear a t-shirt from your favorite band. And again, this conveys a lot of information to other people about your likes and your dislikes and um, what you're interested in. So uh, artistic expression is another fundamental aspect of what it means to be human. I really do hope that you enjoy the content this week. Again, this is our last week of having any kind of learning activities. So you'll have videos and you'll have the PowerPoints and you'll have the last quiz for the term. Uh, next week is a short week and you will have only one task to do, which is to submit your final written assignment. And that needs to be uploaded by the end of the day on Wednesday. So keep in mind that the due date is Wednesday, not the Sunday of that week. Otherwise, your work will be late. I'll be sending out an email to remind you of that. It's been my pleasure to be your instructor during these past five weeks. And you will notice that there is a link in the folder for a uh, professor and instructor evaluation. And I do encourage you to submit an evaluation. This is your opportunity to let ACC know how effective I have been in conveying the content and being responsive to you over the past few weeks in terms of grading, in terms of uh, contact, email, and such. And um, it really does make a difference to me. So I do read these after they are returned to me. I do not see your names attached to them, of course. I won't be able to read them until after grades are turned in. But um, it does help me to plan future courses and to tweak things a little bit and um, see how I can perform better. Of course, if you have nice things to say, I'm always happy about that, too. So for this week, have a um, enjoyable uh, and learning week. And I will see you next week. Take care and uh, have a great summer day.